Did you know that the world record for the quickest acceleration from zero to 100 kilometers per hour was not achieved using a Tesla, a Ferrari, or a Lamborghini? It was actually achieved using a vehicle prototype built from some students from the University of Stuttgart in Germany. The official time registered was just 1.461 seconds. Now, we'll try to simulate this experience, so I will start counting from three to zero, so be ready. Three, two, one, go. Stop, you are now traveling at 100 kilometers per hour, and it took you less time than unlocking your phone. As you can imagine, these guys has, are not just a bunch of friends who decided to build the quickest prototype on Earth. They, are, they come from the um, Green Team Stuttgart team, one of the most famous teams in the Formula Student Championship, an engineering educational competition. Well, we could literally say that the competition is basically Formula One at a student level, as that's really the goal why students from all over the world join this competition to compete in the World Best Motorsport League one day. It all started back in 1981 when the Society of Automotive Engineers created this competition with the purpose of accelerating the transition between the academic world and the automotive sector creating sort of professional racing teams among universities. Now, two classes are allowed in our competitions, the internal combustion engine vehicles and the electrical vehicle. So whether you love the traditional roar of an engine car or you prefer the quiet wearing of a battery pack, you'll find plenty of challenges awaiting for you. The state of the art is the objective of our competition, to represent and innovate it. So, like in the, in the last years, a new category was introduced, the driverless category. The cool thing here is that you can admire some vehicles going faster when driven by the artificial intelligence than when driven by a human pilot. And to embrace the decarbonization process and reduce the overall CO2 emissions, also a hybrid class was implemented, where you can see vehicles powered both by traditional engines and new electric propulsors. All right, so by this point, you should start having an idea of what Formula Student is, but you really know nothing about how it's done. So, three steps. Designing, building, racing. Well, to point this out from the start, every year, every university team has to conceive and fabricate a whole new prototype from scraps, from zero. The first phase is, of course, the design phase, which typically lasts several months and consists in the analysis of last season results and the study and research for new solutions and implementations. When the design phase ends with the design freeze, starts the building phase, where the components and parts are physically produced. When everything is produced, the components are assembled on the vehicle, and when everything is assembled, the vehicle is declared ready to race. Here comes the first track test, the so-called shakedown. I must tell you, this is one of the most cathartic moments of all the entire season, as you finally see your hand design or digital simulation finally transformed into a running car. And usually and often, what started as a cooperation, a professional cooperation between students, really transformed into a true friendship at the end of the year. All right. Now, let me ask you another question. How many of you would feel safe to drive a vehicle only built and conceived from students which can accelerate from zero to 100 kilometers per second in less than two seconds? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Well, let me tell you this. So, four wheels that are not in a straight line must be in the open-wheeled vehicle with an open cockpit and a single seat. Well, what you've just heard is rule T2.1.2 of our official technical regulations, a 131 pages written file with it, which is constantly updated every year. This document is fundamental during the design phase as every assembly and components design must co absolutely comply with these rules. 
in the case any of the components didn't, did not comply with the rules, the vehicle would be automatically ex excluded from the competition. So we have the rules, we have the vehicles, but how is the compliance actually verified? Well, you must know that during the Formula Student events at the competition sites, during the first days, every team must undergo a series of technical different assessments, such as the tilt test here, in which the vehicle is suspended on a, is mounted on a suspended platform and then is, is lifted up to, six, to an angle of 60 degrees of one side. I want to tell you also about the so-called EV killer test, which stands for electrical vehicle killer, which is basically a rain test, rain test, where the water, lots and lots of water are sprinkled on the, um, on the prototype and the, all the electrical system must be kept on and running. Well, you can imagine why it's called the EV killer mm -hmm. test. Now, we talk about what we do, how we do safety, but what about who participates in the Formula Student Championship? Well, five continents, Americas, Africa, Asia, e Europe, and Oceania. That's the scale of our competition. It's global. Basically, in every continent, you can find Formula student teams and university attending in this competition. The results of this has been the organization of more than 20 Formula student events every year, from Brazil to South Korea, from Michigan to Spain. Also, an online global world ranking has been created to keep track of, of all of this, and currently there are more than 800,000 800 teams. Well, but how do teams each ranking points? Well, as we said before, one, the main point of our competition is not to reward the fastest vehicle or to the, to the, or to the lightest pilot. It is really to assess who the, which the best team is from both static and dynamic trials. The objective of the static trials is to assess the awareness and accuracy of the team members in, in understanding the choices and the costs occurred while building the car. Whereas the objective of the dynamic trials is of course to measure the dynamic performance of the vehicles. So by this point, I hope I've managed to convince you that Formula Student really is not just some bunch of friends tinkering with cars, but it's a lot more. It's really an adventure which takes you all the way from the design phase to the racetrack. So, see you there. Thank you.